Good morning, my name is Naomi and I am finally going to show you what is behind this door. You have actually seen this door in a lot of my videos because I'm usually sitting right there and then it's in the background, but you have never seen what's inside. Mostly because it is usually a mess, but boy do I have plans for this room. <laughs> Let me show you. This is a very special room. I've actually already started cleaning it out, but in Dutch this is called an opkamer. And I have absolutely no idea what it's called in English, so if you know, let me know in the comments, because I'm incredibly curious if there is even a word for it. But it is basically connected to the living room. It's a little bit higher, so I actually have to step up a little bit to get inside. And there is a cellar underneath, which I have been told would have been used to store potatoes or apples or something. Now we are going to turn this room into a board game room because we love playing board games, preferably the ones that take us days to finish. So we want a place where we can lay it out on the table and it not be in the way. So that is what this room is going to be. But there is one problem. This floor is incredibly sloped. So badly even that if you were gonna sit here on a chair with wheels, you would roll to the other side of the room in seconds. So that needs to be fixed. And I don't know for sure what is underneath this tile. And until I know that, I can't really make a plan. So the plan for now is empty out the room, take out the floor, and then make a plan. Something that you must have when you live on a farm in the Netherlands. We don't actually wear these. The tiles had apparently been laid into cement, which actually made them incredibly easy to take out. However, they were quite heavy, so I stacked them right outside the room, in the living room actually, about 15 tiles high. And now I've got about two and a half stacks of tiles laying in my living room. I am not quite sure yet if I'm going to use them myself or if we're gonna put them on like marketplace and give them to someone who sees a good use for it. But I should probably figure that out because I want them out of my living room as soon as possible. <laughs> Now I was pretty sure that underneath the tile there were sheets of wood and I was very much hoping that I would be able to screw these out to see what is underneath the floor and maybe even level the floor just by adding some wood to the beams underneath. But sadly, halfway through taking out the tile I realized that the sheets of wood that were underneath were actually not as easy to take out as I had hoped. They were not screwed in, they were actually nailed in, and they were nailed in really good. So I was pretty sure that if I was going to pry them out with a crowbar or something, I would probably break the sheets of wood, and that just didn't sound like a very fun project to me. So we decided to look into a different way of leveling the floor. So I have taken out all the tiles. They are very nicely taking up space in my living room sadly. And we have figured out what we are going to use to level the floor. It is a dry leveling compound. I didn't know this existed, but it's kind of like a, what was what, it called? Well, it's basically cat litter. It, it really does look like cat litter. You spread it out as best you can, and then you put on uh, like floorboards. Now, I do not have any intentions of making this floor perfectly level because, I mean, it's an old house. Nothing is straight. I just, I need it to be a little less bad. <laughs> so we're just gonna do whatever the instructions tell us to do and see how things go. The little baseboard at the end of the room was actually exactly the height that it needed to be level. So instead of taking it out, which I did around the rest of the room, I actually left it in and used it as a guide to level the cat litter stuff. <laughs> it is actually not very hard to do. It was, however, incredibly dusty so I did wear a mask just to not be breathing all that dust in all the time in such a small room. Now there are special types of boards that you're supposed to use with this leveling compound. They didn't have these at the stores that we went to so we ended up buying OSB boards. The boards that you're supposed to be using they don't have tongue and groove they have a different kind of system. Because of the tongue and groove of these OSB boards the cat litter stuff, the leveling compound, would go inside the groove, which made it really hard to connect the pieces properly. So we regretted that a little bit, but it worked out perfectly fine in the end. So that's done. Floor is in. Pretty straight. This took us about 
a day. We went to the hardware store on Sunday morning and Sunday evening around dinner time we were done. So I am incredibly proud of us. Now, as I said, this is never going to be perfectly straight. In fact, if I would ever make anything perfectly level in this house, it would look really weird because something else will be off. But at least it feels level now, which was the idea. So I think it was a success. I'm gonna take you out of this very echoey room and show you my other plans. So, let me take this off. For the floor, we are planning to do real oak wood floorboards. However, it is kind of hard to get them at the moment. So we are currently looking for a company that has what we're looking for and or maybe a company that has something that looks like it. So I, I don't really know what is gonna happen with that yet, but until then we can continue our plans for other things because there are a couple of things that I definitely wanna do in this room. Story time. We used to have a really big fish tank. And when we moved, we took a couple of those fish, put them in a smaller tank and gave them a temporary living spot in our pantry, which was a terrible idea, by the way. This fish tank does not have a lid. It is completely open and it makes this room very warm and very humid all the time, which makes it very hard to keep any produce fresh for a very long time. And that is kind of what the room is meant for. So I needed to go. So it's gonna go in this room, which I think is a beautiful spot for it. However, that does mean that I need to build a stand or something underneath it that will hold the weight of 200 or 250 liters of water. Additionally, I had the idea of building a gigantic, dramatic built-in cabinet going from wall to wall. I figured I will just build that and then make it sturdy enough so that it will hold the fish tank. I will show you some pictures of the kind of cabinet that I'm leaning towards, what I mean. So I am using my background in graphic design to create a sketch of this cabinet in Photoshop. It's completely to scale. However, if I ever make a sketch in Photoshop, it always just turns out a little bit more elaborate than just a sketch. <laughs> but at least it helps me visualize what it will look like. But anyway, this room has very low ceilings, so the whole thing is going to be quite wide, but I think that'll work out perfectly fine. I do really like the idea of adding wood accents, for example, in the back wall of the bookcase. And then I'm not really sure about the height of the shelves yet, because obviously it's not really going to be used for books as much as it's gonna be used for board game boxes, which are generally a lot bigger. So we'll just have to see how things work out, but I'm, I'm not gonna worry about that right now because it's very easily adjustable later. And then I'd also really like to bring back some of the beadboard that was originally used in the kitchen but I am not so sure about that either. Actually, in general, I might just change my mind a million times. This really is just a sketch. What I do know is I'm gonna finish it off with some brass accents. So brass doorknobs, maybe some brass in the built-in lighting, something like that. Now, very often you see these cabinets built with some kind of standard cabinet as a base. I am not gonna do that this time. This is not going to be an Ikea hack. I am going to build everything myself, mostly because I wanna have complete control over the ability to hold that fish tank, but also just because I like it to be completely custom. It can be fitted exactly to that wall, to that room. So it's kind of intimidating. I have never done such a big project before. I am going to guarantee you that things are gonna go wrong. And of course, as usual, I will share that with you. Then there is also a wall socket that is going to be in the open shelving area, which I don't want. I want it to be down in the closed cabinets area. So I'm gonna have to move that. And then also I kind of want built-in lights. Now all this planning and looking at floors and all that has taken me way longer than I had planned. So there are not very many pretty things in this video. However, if you like following along on these restoration and redesign projects, hit that subscribe button because I will be back next week, hopefully with a lot more progress. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week.